So if you have an RV or a van or anything that's built on the Ford Transit all-wheel drive chassis, is it a good idea to do a lift kit to increase the clearance? So we thought so, or we at least hope so, but this is the story of our experience with lifting our Echo. We're not sponsored by anything or anyone included in this video. So this is our totally unbiased, honest opinion of this lift process. When we were researching this topic, we had a lot of questions, probably just like you do. And we had a hard time finding the answers to a lot of those questions. Questions like, why would you even want to lift on an RV like this in the first place? What are the options out there for adding a lift to a Ford Transit all-wheel drive and which one of those options fit you best? And then also there's the question of how are you going to get it installed? How much is this going to cost you? So most importantly, is it going to make any difference at all? If you're new here, we're Owen and Lynn of Van Tracking Lifestyle. So what options do you have when it comes to adding a lift kit to a Ford Transit all-wheel drive chassis? Well, there are several, but it really boils down right now, at least at the time of filming this, to two. You have the Quigley lift and the Van Compass 2.0 ride improvement package. Now, the Quigley lift, for my research anyway, is maybe a little bit more robust and adds a little bit more clearance than the Van Compass. But the Van Compass allows us to adjust the ride so that we can get a smoother ride when we're off-road and a firmer ride when we're on the interstate and other places. The Quigley lift has less installers across the United States than Van Compass and costs considerably more than the Van Compass. For all those reasons, Lynn and I chose the Van Compass 2.0 ride improvement package to lift our Winnebago Echo. So, you've decided what you want, so how do you get this installed? Well, if you're mechanically inclined, you can probably do it yourself. But, if you want all wheels to stay on the ground while you're traveling, you might want a professional to do it. So we chose Freedom Van Gogh in Jacksonville, Florida. Like most installers, Freedom Van Gogh is booked out two to three months in advance. So if you're going to choose them or just about anyone, make sure you book it well in advance. I will say that when I was dealing with these guys in December when we were booking this, we found them to be very professional and very prompt, and they were just great to deal with. They helped with every decision along the process, and I could not have been happier, and I was anticipating that once we got there, it was going to continue to be that way. So with that appointment in the books, we set out to Florida this winter to enjoy warmer weather. After three months of exploring, we had to reposition us and the van closer to Jacksonville, Florida. I'm glad we're back on the dirt road. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful drive. It is. The next morning, we were up early for our 9 o'clock a.m. appointment at Freedom Van Gogh. And because we were driving in Jacksonville, we allowed a lot of time for traffic backups. So that, that drive from where we were typically should be an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. But if there are any accidents on 95, it can be as much as two and a half hours. So we gave ourselves a little bit of extra room and luckily there were no accidents. Turn so right onto Central Parkway. We're going to figure out what to do with our extra out. Your destination is on the left. Oh, I'll see it. <laughs> Guess it's a good thing we have uh, our home with us. They said they'll come out at 8.45, uh, 15 minutes earlier than our appointment, and that's when they'll start. Well, we have our own little work area here. It's going to be a long day. Uh, looks like about seven and a half hours of waiting. And it's cool. Since we didn't have another vehicle, we spent the day in and around their waiting room. All that work took all day long, but they eventually came back to us and said, hey guys, it's ready. Here are the tires. Looks awesome. Lots more uh, clearance it looks like so far. We'll see. I mean, they just look so much tougher and match the style of the Echo so much better. We needed to spend one more night in Jacksonville. So we booked a site at Hannah Park 
and ate dinner with a dear friend. And for the first time, we got to see another upgrade we did. The high-vis fog lights on the front. They're awesome. Awesome. No more looking around in the dark when we're pulling into a campsite or into a forest road at night. We started this year's trip at Hannah Park. Uh, we're ending it at Hannah Park. We woke up this morning here because we need to go get the front end alignment after doing all the work on the front tires and the suspension. So that's where we're heading this morning. One other issue, the inside back tires are not reading at all on the tire pressure monitoring system. It's throwing a fault. So we're hoping the tire store that we're going to to get the front end alignment can address that. If not, we'll have to go back to the place we had the work done and get them to replace the tire pressure monitors the inside of those two tires, which might mean we'd have to sit there all day again today. I don't know. I don't want to do that. I want to be driving home by lunch. She's going in for the front end alignment. And once again, we're sitting somewhere waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one more thing to clarify. Inside of here, each one of these tires has a, a tire pressure sensor that transmits to the controller inside of the Ford Transit. And it's a Ford product. And this tire is okay, but the inside passenger tire is not. It's not picking that up in the uh, controller. So the tire shop couldn't repair that they said that wasn't something they had all the parts to do so we went back off to freedom van gogh and they worked on it for two or three hours and then came back and said i don't think it's anything we can repair either make an appointment at a ford dealership and send us the bill and we will reimburse you for that now i gotta tell you that lynn and i we didn't like waiting around we didn't like how much time it took out of our day and our travel but what we really did appreciate was the fact that they were going to take care of us. They realized that all six tires had monitors that were working when we got there, and they should work when we leave. So they're going to stand behind that. We have an appointment, actually, in about a week and a half now to go to a Ford dealership and get this repaired. And hopefully all of those will be working properly. And that little stupid tire pressure monitor alert that stays on all the time, that thing can go off in there. It says six hours and 56 minutes to get home. We should get home at 7.46 tonight, but I'm telling you, yeah, we probably won't. Thank you for visiting Florida. Goodbye, Florida. We've had a good time this year. The best three-month winter trip we've ever taken in our life, I believe. It was perfect. We stayed in so many places, didn't we? It was just... Feels awesome. Later that night. <laughs> Are you glad to be home, Maggie? Are you glad to be home? So that brings us back full circle, back at home. So it's time to answer a few of those big questions, like how much did this cost? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Total balance all in $6,700. That equates to $3,800 to get the Van Compass lift kit installed and $2,700 worth of tires, which are seven bigger tires, including our spare. Good deal? I don't know. It's a lot of money. And only time will tell as to whether it was money well spent. And as for a better driving experience on the highway, we can already answer that question. It's a lot better. It's almost night and day difference. There's less buffeting when a big truck passes you. Whenever you're driving down and the wind hits you, it doesn't move you sideways. It may move the van a little, but the van stays vertical. And you don't bounce as much when you hit potholes. Or go over curbs to go in to get gas. And we've also noticed because of the additional lift, it's really easy to back into those back end parking spots that before I worried about whether I was going to back over the curb. I've got so much clearance now that I don't even worry about that. So the driving experience on paved roads, it's a lot better. Hey guys, I just realized something as we were putting this video together. I didn't tell you how much gain or just how big the lift was, how many inches we gained. And the reason, well, it's going to vary. It varies based upon how much water you have in here, how much you're carrying, what kind of, you know, what, what you've got in the garage. Everything weighs everything down. So I guess the best I can do is tell you this. 
based upon how we normally ride in the van, we gained four to four and a half inches of additional lift. Now that's probably two to two and a half with the uh, van compass and two more with the bigger tires. I hope that answers that question because I think, I think we're going to get that question a lot. So we're going to kind of jump ahead of that. Uh, now back into the video. So there's one more thing we'd like to test and that is how will it do on dirt roads? Right now, we're at Old North Carolina 105, the Pisgah National Forest, Forest Road up here that's famous in North Carolina for being a little dicey. Now at first it'll be okay and then the further on this road you go over the mountain, the worse it gets. That said, you've already seen the echo up here before because Maggie and I came up here one day and tried it out. But now, that'll give us something great to compare to. How does it handle with the potholes? Is it a better ride? Is it softer? Does it bounce around as much? There were some places I worried about clearance. Today, we're going to test all that out, and we'll take you with us. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, remember we said we could improve the ride on dirt roads and on paved roads. I'm going to get down here, and I'm going to reset this to be a softer setting so it'll do better in these dirt situations. So here we are up underneath the van and we're in the very back uh, and I've got to set both of these. There's a lot of adjustments you can make to this but I'm just going to set it to 1.4. There we go. I'll do the same thing on the other side over there and then we'll go test this out. All done? All done. Are you getting excited? I am yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. All right, let's go. Told him no, but he thinks he can do that, so let's see. Like a whole road. He did it. Let's go look at this view. Wow. That's just awesome. It kind of brings tears to your eyes. So pretty. going off riding unless you get a little muddy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, baby. Beautiful. Well, that was fun, but was it worth it? The cost of the lift? Yeah. Let me just say this. 
that was fun. <laughs> that was just, that was fun. And look, just look, look where, where it brought, brought us. us. Beautiful Look views. at this view. You could not get to this view. And did you see how we climbed up onto this little hillside here? We could not have done that before the lift for sure. There's a lot of clearance needed to climb up on this little lift here. But yeah. man, I tell you it's what, been awesome. it has. It yeah, has. it was a little rougher than I thought, than yeah, I remember, remember it being, but. Everybody says in the springtime when we get a lot of rain, there's a lot of ruts, yeah. and sure enough, there was. Yeah. And I know the, the cameras aren't gonna capture it, but you guys just have to trust us. This was as about as bad as we wanna go on in our Echo, and I felt completely safe and comfortable, and the ride was so much more improved. Uh, putting it on one, we could have gone softer, but it was it was really good. Yeah, I think it worked out great. I'm gonna go ahead and answer one more question that I know we're going to get, and that is, should you do this lift? Just because there's a lift available for this Ford Transit and the Winnebago Echo, it doesn't mean that you need to go out and do it. The answer to that, well, you're gonna to have to answer it yourself. For us, it's really worth it based upon how we like to travel because we like we like the uh, added security of having those four additional inches because like you saw, we could not have gotten up on that little cliff area without that four inches. We just about scraped in the front to begin with. But if you don't find yourself off on those kind of situations and driving off road, the lift, you, you probably shouldn't spend the money for it. But once again, that's not for Lynn and I to tell you. All we're trying to tell you is this. For us, it was a really, really good idea. And we're very happy both with the work that was done at Freedom Van Gogh and the lift itself. It, it's made this echo more enjoyable for the two of us.